Honorable Speaker, the median age in this country is 19 years old. We should consider the life and the livelihood of our children. We should be investing in education. We should be investing in health rather than paying ourselves, feeding ourselves out of the poor people of this country. Wow. Wow. Yo, peeps, did you hear that, man? <laughs> did you hear what that woman said, man? Wow. That was strong, man. Man, this woman's got really strong spirit. She's very rugged. She's very dogged. This is how humans should act when they're in politics. Wow. This is really, really encouraging. And it's very good that this is really coming from an African woman. We know African women to be very strong and they've got very strong resilience. And this is an example of it. When one woman is standing in the midst of men and she's speaking, roaring like a lion, that mother Africa, which she really is, man, this is really, really encouraging. I wonder when Niger is going to be like this, man. They call Niger the giant of Africa, the mountains that can never go down. But what's going on? Niger is actually going down at the moment. Wow, this woman has really, really spoken the heart of almost every African child. She is spitting fire, saying that the government doesn't love the people of the Gambia because they are overweighing and overpowering money in the salary, which makes their salary far, far, far too buoyant above the expectations. And she doesn't feel comfortable with it. And this is how it should be. Africa, wake up! Mama Africa, wake up and roar and spit, speak out your voice. I told you, women are good. If women come into power, there's going to be a high level of compassion. The old recycle, old man who's been sitting there doing the same thing over and over and they can't make any changes is becoming a real big problem for Africa. And this is why Africa is not changing. The world is moving on a bad rate now, but Africa is still on analog. The world has gone digital. Africa is still on analog. What's going on, Africa? Wake up. Niger, wake up. You've got great people representing Africa all over the world, from Ghana to Niger to Cameroon to Sierra Leone to Zimbabwe to the Gambia to South Africa. Name it. Kived Island, name it. Morocco, Tunisia. You've got great countries like Kenya. You've got great countries like um, Uganda. And a lot of beautiful people all over the world. Go to America, go to the UK, go to the whole of Asia. So you're going to see Africans doing great things. Is it in the tech industry? Is it in the entertainment industry? Africans are doing great. What's going on with these leaders? What is going on with you guys? You need to wake up. You need to learn from the smart age. So you can do the needful man. Listen to this woman. Just listen to this woman. She's a super bomb, a superpower, and we love her. Just listen to her. The Honorable Member for Banjul South. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, I would first of all like to thank the committee clerks of this August House for the great work that they have done by spending the whole night in this August Assembly preparing a report for us. I thank you, class of the National Assembly. Honorable Speaker, I think looking at the Honorable Minister's statement and looking at the budget, I think that our government does not love this country. They do not have the feeling to nurture our children in this country. Honorable Speaker, six billion dollars in salaries alone, not in administrative cost. Honorable Speaker, and we say we are a poor country. Honorable Speaker, the median age in this country is 19 years old. We should consider the life and the livelihood of our children. We should be investing in education. We should be investing in health rather than paying ourselves, feeding ourselves out of the poor people of this country. I will start 
with this August Assembly, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, to see the salary of the Honorable Speaker increased from 658 million to one to 658 thousand to one million five hundred and sixty I feel ashamed to call myself an honorable member honorable speaker I gave myself for service I did not give myself for the poor people to feed me and my family honorable speaker when I saw this I felt embarrassed I did not want to come to this budget session because I said to myself, there is no need because we are just sharing the cake in our pockets, going home, feeding ourselves. Not only that, but to see the responsibility allowance, the residential allowance, the roping allowance, and all those for the representatives of the people. It is embarrassing for me to go back to my poor constituency and tell them that the meager resources of this country, I am paid that much at your expense. I took an oath, Honorable Speaker, to serve and to give back to my society, not to enrich myself. And even if I go to the Constitution, Honorable Speaker, it says that we shouldn't deliberately enrich ourselves. And increasing our salaries is deliberately enriching ourselves and that is an embarrassment i think as a national assembly we should not accept any salary increment it was in this august assembly that we sat and discussed the salaries of the ministers and denied them even though they went behind our backs and increased it that is their problem we offered ourselves for service honorable speaker we were not appointed we were elected and we offered ourselves honorable speaker and i think we should think of our people when we do the budget. I'm not, I'm not allowing you to observe me. I don't have that time. When you are on your own feet, observe yourself, please. Thank you. <laughs> Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, when we go to the office of the President, Honorable Speaker, I have seen new units, ICT units being established at the office of the president. The office of the president has, um, uh, I think, uh, whatever they call it, the person that does has public speech or whatever, that lady. Why would he need an order ICT? Why would the honorable, um, the, his excellency, want six advisors? How many ministers does he have in addition to the new ministries? If the president is telling us that the ministers are not good enough, I told this August Assembly here last year when we did the budget, if he is implying that his ministers are not good, let him sack them and apply and, and um, appoint advisors. The ministers, according to our constitution, should be competent enough to advise him on any policy under their ministries. And if they are not good enough, if they are not good enough, and if that is what he's implying, that they are not good enough, let him sack them and appoint advisors in their place. But as a poor country, we cannot be paying ministers and be paying advisors and be paying deputy advisors. Come on, we are a poor country. Instead of thinking of ourselves, six billion in emoluments alone. Come on. Honorable Speaker, I think we should think of the Gambian people, not our pockets. We say that when you are a politician, your skin starts shining, and I'm starting to believe it. Once you are appointed a minister, before two months, you marry a second wife. You start buying homes abroad. Come on, at the expense of who? At the expense of the poor Gambian? No way, Mr. Speaker. I am ashamed to call myself a National Assembly member. To be honest, I did not want to contest again. The only reason I contested was to show them that I can come back to this August Assembly, and I did against all odds, Mr. Speaker. If they want, they can die seeing me at the Assembly, but I will come and I will speak my mind and I will go home and I will eat my lamb. That is who I am, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I looked at the Ministry of Justice's budget. Mr. Speaker, we had TRRC. 
Mr. Speaker, we don't have the commission anymore, but we have the recommendations of the TRRC. Mr. Speaker, is the president not willing to act on the recommendations of the TRRC? Sometimes I wonder if he is, because to be honest, I'm not against anybody, but we've suffered for 22 years. And after 22 years, 2016, we thought we were embarking on change. And the Honorable President imposed certain people on us, and I think that was deliberate so that we will not implement the recommendations of the TRRC. Mr. Speaker, if you look at 2021, the TRRC, 46 million. 2022, zero. 2023, zero. So that is a direct indication that he does not want to put anything on that. Yes, the commission is no more. But the recommendations, how are we going to do implementation if nothing is, 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 is allocated for it? Mr. Minister, take note of that, please. We did not suffer for 22 years in vain. I personally lost my dad under a dictatorship of the previous regime. I'm not saying do whatever, but I'm saying let us work on the recommendations. Let us act on them, put money on it so that we will at least have hope that there will be recommendation. Mr. Speaker, and I've also seen that payment of school bus services to GTSE in 2021, 909 million. 2022, 10 million. 2023, zero. So the little support that they were giving to our children to use the school buses, they have taken. What have they done with it? Is that what they are using to add to their salaries? I am asking, let us give to our children. Our children need support. We have seen 70 plus children die. What have they done? Is it reflected in the budget to make sure that that has stopped, that will not happen? Because I've heard here the reason was because we did not have labs to do the test. Mr. Speaker, has that been picked in the budget? We did not come here. We did not fight to win our elections, to come here and eat and take the little resources, take it home and put it in our pockets. No, that is not me. And I know it is not my colleagues as well. I trust you all, honorable colleagues, to make sure that there is no increment let us start from home. Let us start from home. Let us not increase the salaries of the leadership in this assembly. When I looked at the budget, I was like, wow. The speaker, the deputy speaker, the majority leader, the minority leader, they have taken care of themselves. But have they thought about our children at home, our schools, no way. There's a school in my constituency that is at risk of being closed, moved to another school. Have they thought about that? No way, but I have. Thank you very much, honorable speaker. And for that, honorable colleagues, let us not increase anybody's salary. Let us redirect those resources back to our communities. Thank you.